So we continue. So let's uh, review what it is that we what we did. So we said, okay, there's this function, a function <coughs> that is the inverse of log. So what is the name of that function? The exponential, okay, and it is written like so. So then the log inverse function, right, is written like so, e to the x. Okay, and the main calculus result was this so far the derivative of e to the u, the derivative with respect to x of e to the u is what? Is, so what happens when you compute the derivative of an exponential? You get exactly the same exponential back, and then for the chain rule, multiply by du dx. Okay, so then let's review that just for a minute since there seemed to be too much of a pause for my taste. <laughs> about the question. Okay, so then if f of x <coughs> is something like this, how about e to the, say, 5x squared plus 7? Please compute the derivative. So then, what is it? Yeah, e to the 5x squared plus 7, and then multiplied by 10x. Okay, now what are the critical numbers? Right, so then there are, <coughs> there are two possibilities. Right, we could be in the possibility that the derivative is undefined. So where does that occur? Nowhere, right? Because 5x squared plus 7, that's defined everywhere. The exponential is defined for anything. So the exponential term is always defined, and 10x is always defined. So there are no places where the derivative is undefined. Alternatively, what else might be true? The derivative could be 0. So that's the same as saying that e to the 5x squared, 5x squared plus 7 multiplied by 10x is 0. So that's the product of two things is 0. So either the first thing is 0, e to the 5x squared plus 7. That could be 0. Or the second thing, 10x, could be 0. So I'll solve the second one, since that one's easy. That would be x is 0. So then when is x to e to the 5x squared plus 7 equal to 0? Never, right? Never, because the exponential, what is the, dom what is the range of the exponential function? positive numbers. The exponential of anything at all is positive. Okay. Anything at all. Any real number. Okay, so this is no solutions. So altogether, how many critical points are there? Are critical numbers? Just one. This one right here. In fact, I, I probably would never ask you to plot this, but if you were to plot this, this function would have the following kind of appearance. Okay, so 5x squared plus 7. So it would look like this. <coughs> okay, so then it has an asymptote to the... Oh, wait. No, it wouldn't look like that. Okay, so I take that back altogether. So it would look... It would look like <coughs> this. It would go off very quickly in both directions. Okay, so then wh where where is if this is the correct graph, assuming that I've used my imagination correctly, where is the only critical number? At zero, right? And what's happening there, just according to your eyes? I'm in. <coughs> okay. So incidentally, what what is the meaning of a place where the derivative is zero, geometrically speaking? So how about this? What is the geometric interpretation of the derivative? The slope of a tangent line. So what does it mean? What does it mean for the derivative to be 0 geometrically? It means 
there's a horizontal tangent. Okay, good, right? These are important things, right? Just because it's, we've been talking about antiderivatives and integrals for a while doesn't mean that these other things cease to exist. Okay, so any questions about this? Any questions about it? Okay, so now we need to do another thing. So now we need to talk about integrals and antiderivatives. Okay, so then here is the antiderivative. The antiderivative of e to the u du is e to the u plus a constant. Okay, pretty easy. So if, if the exponential function is its own derivative, then it's also its own antiderivative up to a constant. Good. So then let's do some examples to make sure that this is really clear. So the simplest possible example would be something like this, e to the 4x, the antiderivative of that. <coughs> okay, so what do you think? <coughs> Should do a what? do a substitution. So one of, the f one of the first things you should be thinking about is, is this exactly one of the antiderivatives I know? So then you basically know the antiderivative of x to the n for any n. One of those cases is the antiderivative of 1 over x dx. What is that? Natural log. Okay. You also know the antiderivatives of various combinations of trig functions, like the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, blah, blah, blah. So now you have this new one right here. In order for it to work, in order for it to work, right, this argument, u, has to be the same as this differential part, u. So are these two things the same in this question? No, they're not. One of them is 4x and one of them is x. So then we're going to have to somehow manipulate the symbols until they are the same. What is the name for that method to manipulate these things? Substitution. Okay, so then. If u is 4x, then du is 4dx. But I don't have 4dx, so I'll solve for dx and say that du over 4 is dx. So now, do you see that we have enough substitution material to proceed? OK, so <coughs> you get the antiderivative of e to the u du over 4 which is one-fourth the antiderivative of e to the u du. And so now, now that we've performed the substitution, is it now one of the antiderivatives you know? Yes, right? So then it is one-fourth e to the u plus a constant. So then is that the answer to the question? No, that's not the answer to the question because it needs to be in terms of x. So one-fourth e to the 4x plus a constant. <coughs> OK, so now I'd like to point something out. All of this procedure that we just did, the only thing it depends on is it depends on the fact that 4 is a constant. Right? So can you see it would have worked perfectly fine with 5, or with 10, or with pi, or whatever other constant you like? OK, well, except, except 0. It wouldn't have worked for 0, I guess. <laughs> So any non-zero constant. <coughs> OK, so then that is the subject of the next remark. And here is an antiderivative that you don't need to memorize. But if you were to memorize it, it would probably make your life a little simpler. The antiderivative of e to the k u, where k is a constant, du, is 1 over k e to the u, uh, e to the k u plus c, which is kind of gratifying, right? It's a little bit gratifying because if we were to compute the anti -der the derivative of e to the ku, you wouldn't divide by k, you would you'd multiply by k for the chain rule. Okay, so it's sort of gratifying here that you know if you're doing a derivative, then you need to multiply. If you're doing an antiderivative, that's the inverse operation, so you need to divide. Okay, great. So that's sort of gratifying, but it doesn't always work out just exactly like this because the chain rule is a little more subtle than that. OK, so then as an example of this phenomenon, I could say, please compute the antiderivative of something great, like 5x squared minus 3e to the 2x uh, dx. And you should be able to do this in one line with very little effort. OK, 
so that 5 just hangs out, x to the 3 over 3, and then minus this 3 just hangs out, and then 1 half e to the 2x plus a constant. So any question about this? <clears throat> any question about it? Okay, good. So now let's do a few more. How about this one? This one is always entertaining. How about the antiderivative of, I got to think about it for a second. Surely they have it here. They always have it. Yeah, okay. We'll do this one. E to the, e to the 1 over x divided by x squared dx. Hmm. 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 So, a couple strategies I recommend. So first, we're right at the beginning of doing antiderivatives and integrals of the exponential function, so probably it has to do with that first. The second is that typically when you're doing calculus, derivatives or antiderivatives, it is usually more beneficial to write exponents as negative powers. So better to write, for example, division by x squared as multiplication by x to the negative 2. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, let's go ahead and rewrite this and say that, well, first I can say that this is e to the x to the negative 1, like so, and then over x squared. So I rewrote 1 over x as x to the negative 1. And now I'm going to rewrite the division by x squared like so. I'm going to say that this is e and then x, e, e to the x to the negative 1 multiplied by x to the negative 2 dx. So now you, know, you only know one antiderivative involving exponentials, so that has to be it. So what should you do from here? Right, u is x, to the is x to the negative 1. The only antiderivative you know is the antiderivative of e to the u du. So, you know, this part's going to have to be u, just by process of elimination. So then, du dx, if you like, what's the derivative of x to the negative 1? Negative x to the negative 2. So then I can solve for du and say that du divided by negative 1 is equal to x to the negative 2 dx. Ah, so magic, right? It showed up exactly how we wanted it to. Okay, so does everyone see that I can, I can uh, transform all x symbols to u symbols? Okay, so then now this is the antiderivative of e to the u, and then x to the negative 2 dx became du over negative 1, so that's the same as negative the antiderivative of e to the u du. Is that now one of the antiderivatives you know? Yes, so then this is now negative e to the u plus a constant, and so this is negative e to the x to the negative 1 plus a constant. Wonderful. So any question about this one? Yes? No, not always, but often. <coughs> I can make it not be that way. <laughs> but, um, you know, at this, at this stage, at this position in the class, basically always. Okay, so the purpose of me showing this example is this, is that this is how the question is posed. And every semester, I pose a question that's not so different than this one on a quiz or an exam, and students just stare at it. I get all kinds of blank responses, all kinds of blank responses. And so I have something to share with you about teaching and, and your life as a student, especially in a computational class like calculus. You should write something down, right? Because, you know, my experience is most humans think that they can, in a sense, in their imagination, write something down in the paper in their head and then look at it. But actually, humans are very poor at doing that. 
you should write something down on the paper. Okay, so then I usually give this example in my office hours. <laughs> And then I watch the students sit here and do nothing, do nothing, do nothing. And then I say, well, I just write down this one. And then all of a sudden, almost all the students can get it. Okay, so you just need to write down something. OK, good. <clears throat> so let's do another one. How about this one? Oh, this one will be great. OK, so now we're going to do an integral. An integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x dx. So this is, a, this is an example where it's not exactly that way. <coughs> OK. Hmm. So this is the first time you've seen it, so it's OK if you don't see what to do. <laughs> but I'll say do a substitution. You should do a substitution. OK, so let's try one. What if I was to say that u is e to the x? Then what would du be? e to the x dx, would that cover everything? Nope, wouldn't cover everything. So it must not be the numerator. OK, so let's try the denominator. So this wasn't it. So a little bit of life wasted, but that's OK. So u is, u is 1 plus e to the x. And then in this case, du is still e to the x dx. But this is a better situation, right? Because now I'm saying u is the denominator. And I'll rewrite this integral just slightly and say that this is 1 over 1 plus e to the x multiplied by e to the x dx. OK, so now with this substitution right here, you can see that I'm about to transform it into 1 over u du. Now, what is the antiderivative of 1 over u du? natural log blah blah so everyone should see what's happening now so I'm gonna go ahead and substitute the limits u evaluated at 0 is 1 plus e to the 0 what's e to the 0 1 right so 1 plus e to the 0 is 2 okay and then u evaluated at 1 well what's that 1 plus e okay so then now it becomes the integral from 2 to 1 plus e, and then 1 over u du. <coughs> so then this is the log of the absolute value of u evaluated from 2 to 1 plus e, which is the log of 1 plus e, where I've dropped the absolute value because 1 plus e is positive, and then minus the log of 2. OK, now, I would never, prob almost never require this, but now I'm going to require it just to test you. Okay, I want you to rewrite this expression as a single log. What is it that I'm asking you to do? Yeah, to use the fact that the difference of logs is the log of a quotient. That is to say that the, this is the log of 1 plus e divided by 2. <coughs> Okay, so any question about this one? Any question about it? Any questions? Yeah, so I changed the limits in this position here. So you can either s not change the limits and then resubstitute back or change the limits and not substitute. One or the other must occur. <coughs> other questions? Other questions? <coughs> OK, so does anyone have any questions before we move on to something else? Does anyone have any questions before we move on to something else? 
Okay, so I put a couple, I put a couple questions on the take-home quiz, which were in this vein. So I can, I want to show you what this is about, a little bit. So one of the take-home quiz questions said something about, uh, I gave you the power rule, but the power rule was defined in terms, was demonstrated for you in terms of the binomial theorem, and then as a consequence, uh, this is the power rule, right, that was demonstrated for you in class, right, is n x to the n minus 1, but that was only true for positive integers, right, the, the demonstration that I gave you required the binomial theorem, and the binomial theorem only works for positive integers n. Ah, but then I said, but you can trust me, I'm your friendly local mathematician, I promise you that it actually works for any value of n. And it does, okay, but the actual demonstration that I gave you only guaranteed it for positive values. Okay, so on the, on the take-home quiz, I sort of lead you the, through doing it for fractional powers like 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over n, generally where n is positive. Okay, but... <coughs> But this can be done. This can be done using uh, exponentials for any power of n. So let's go through it. So generally speaking, what if I give you y is x to the n? What if I give you y is x to the n? <laughs> then one way, one way to show, one way to show. that dy dx is equal to uh, nx to the n minus 1 is with logs and exponentials. Okay, so in particular, I can say that, well, y is x to the n. In that case, I can compute the log of both sides. So then the log of y is equal to the log of x to the n. <coughs> okay, now this is, now it requires that I make, <laughs> that it's positive. Okay, so then now, the log of x to the n. Now what can I do with the exponent? Sorry? Yeah, move it to the front. So the log of y <coughs> is equal to uh, n log of x. Okay, so now I can compute the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of the right-hand side is easy. n is just a constant, so that's n multiplied by, what's the derivative of the log of x? 1 over x. Okay, now the left-hand side is slightly more entertaining. What is the derivative of the left-hand side? Yeah, 1 over y dy dx. And it's only slightly more entertaining because the chain rule becomes apparent. Right, the chain rule is operating on both sides, it's just that on the right-hand side it wasn't dy dx, it was dx dx, okay, which is 1. Okay, so now you can see, oh, I can solve for y now, or dy dx, that is to say. So dy dx, dy dx is n multiplied by uh, 1 over x multiplied by y. Okay, so then dy dx is equal to n multiplied by 1 over x, and then what was y? x to the n minus 1. Uh, excuse me, just x to the n. I got ahead of myself there. And then what is 1 over x multiplied by x to the n? x to the n minus 1, so long as x is positive. So this is n multiplied by x to the n minus 1. And the... the the purpose of showing me this, showing you this argument is that where did I use the fact that n was a positive integer? I didn't, right? I didn't. The only thing that's required in this whole argument is that n is a constant. So then, in fact, the power rule works for, for any power. Great. So any question about that? <coughs> Yeah, so this, this is just, I, I don't know how I would phrase this as a question. 
this is just a demonstration of the power rule that, and showing that it works for any power n because this argument doesn't depend on what n is at all. <coughs> Except for, <laughs> right, n can't be 0. <laughs> it can't be 0. <laughs> because if n is 0, then y is equal to 1. <coughs> and then the derivative is 0. OK, great. So let's go on. So now we're in section 5.5, 5, which is a very short section. Okay, and it has to do with bases other than E. Where E is the natural number. Okay, so first, the first requirement and basically the only requirement, is that we need to say the following. Let, let A have the following property, that A is going, let A be a number such that A is positive and A is not equal to 1. So some positive non-unit number. Then, a to the x is by definition e to the log of a multiplied by x. Okay, that's the definition. So you've seen other exponentials in other classes like in pre-calculus, you might have seen 2 to the x, or 3 to the x, or 5 to the x, or whatever, 10 to the x. Like in chemistry, right? You have to put things in scientific notation, 6.203 times 10 to the 23, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Okay, so then 10 to the x. Okay, this is its definition. It is defined, as far as a mathematician is concerned, in terms of the natural exponential. So then that's why, when you're in a math class, especially my math class, I'll say the exponential, okay, and I say the log. I don't say that, I almost never say natural log because all exponentials and logs are defined in terms of the log and the exponential we just got finished talking about, the one that's in the natural base. Okay, so any questions about this? <coughs> any questions about it? Just the definition of, of these bases other than E. Okay, so then now, <coughs> this will be the first comment. And then the second comment is that <coughs> if we have such an A, then all of the rules of exponentials work exactly the way you hope. Right, so for example, what is A to the X multiplied by A to the Y? a to the x plus y, right? a to the x plus y. What is, what is a to the 0? 1. Right, how about what is, uh, this one will be important, What's, what is a to the x to the y? a to the x, y. Okay, so all of the rules of exponents that you learned before this class, they're still legitimate and they're still binding on you. The thing that is new for you is that you're understanding that mathematically, 2 to the x, for example, this function 2 to the x that you may have seen before, it is by definition e to the log base 2 multiplied by x e to the log base 2 multiplied by x. So now I need to give you <coughs> a remark <laughs> which will justify this to you because maybe this seems like I'm pulling it out of the air but now I want to give you a rem remark that will justify this choice and definition to you. So for example, a to the x, well I could, you know, I should be able to write that like this. How about a to the x? All I did is I put some parentheses around it, so that's legitimate. 
OK, so then now, here's something that will be kind of weird. So I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to rewrite A, but I'm going to write it in a strange way. So I'm going to use the fact that the exponential and the log are inverse functions. OK, so I can say that A as a number, well, that is the exponential of the log of A. Right, because the exponential and log function are inverses. So this is e to the log of a. And then using the rules of exponents that you already know, right? this is e to the blah to the blah, what do you do with iterated exponents? You multiply them. So this is e to the log of a multiplied by x. So this really is exactly what you already knew. OK, so now let's actually compute the <coughs> derivatives of these functions. So here is the result. The result is that the derivative of a to the x, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x multiplied by the log of a. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate that result to you in just a moment. But for now, I want you to ask yourself, does this agree with what I already know? So for example, if the base a is actually e, the natural number, then the derivative of e to the x should be e to the x. What is this log term coming in? Right, what if it was e? So if a is e, then the derivative of e to the x, according to this rule, should be e to the x multiplied by the log of e. Now, is that OK? Yes, that's OK. And why is that OK? Ah, right, because the log of e is 1. Right, that's equal to 1. So ah, it does agree with everything we already knew. OK. So now let's demonstrate that this is actually the case. So we have the derivative of a to the x. Well, before we can compute the derivative, we need to appeal to the definition of a to the x. That is e log a x, like so. OK, now, we know how to compute the derivative of the exponential function. When you compute the derivative of the exponential, you get exactly that exponential back. So e to the log a x, and then now for the chain rule, multiplied by the derivative of log a x. Now, e to the log a x, that's just a fancy way to write a to the x, right? These two are the same thing. Now, log of a, a is a constant, so what is log of a? also a constant, right? So then, what is the derivative of a constant times x? That constant, right? So then, multiplied by log a. Okay, so there it is. So any question about this? <coughs> OK, so now we can do some examples. So how about what is the derivative, please, of something wonderful like pi to the 5x plus 3. What's the derivative? OK, so then this is an exponential. It's an exponential, so then when you compute its derivative, that exact same exponential will reappear. 5x, pi to the 5x plus 3. And then, because we're not operating in the natural base, we get this garbage log of pi showing up. OK, and then, in addition to that, in addition to that, we, we get the chain rule. So multiplied by the derivative of 5x plus 3. OK, so this, this term right here, this is the, the base penalty, right? Mother Nature is punishing you for operating in base pi instead of base e. OK, and this, this thing is showing up because of what? The chain rule. OK, so then 
this after considering that <laughs> silly argument. 5x plus 3 multiplied by the log of pi multiplied by 5. Okay, so any question about this? Any question about it? <clears throat> okay. So now I'd like to compare some things. So how about how about the derivative these two different derivatives. The derivative of 2 to the x and the derivative of x to the 2. Hmm. So what do you think? What's the derivative of 2 to the x? 2 to the x times log 2. Okay, what's the derivative of x to the 2? Two? 2x, two right? So then the purpose of me showing these together is because, I, because humans are sort of pattern matching machines. Okay, and these two patterns, 2 raised to x and x raised to 2, are superficially similar in some ways, but in fact they're quite different. Okay, so I want you to see them very close to each other, and I want you to recognize that they are quite different. Okay, so the one thing that will anger the greater, <laughs> okay, one thing that will certainly anger the greater is, is something like this. You say, well, I'm going to compute the derivative of, say, I don't know, something like this, e to the e to the 5x. And you say that, well, that should be um, 5x multiplied by e to the 5x minus 1. Okay, so I want someone to explain to me what sort of brokenness occurred in the brain of this student that did this. What happened here? Well, that's the, that's the power rule, right? So the power rule says n x to the n minus 1. Right? So this is, like, this is like some kind of broken attempt to use the power rule. Okay? In the case when you don't have a polynomial, you have an exponential. So this is totally broken. And so when a grader sees this, okay, and the grader will see this, I can make that prediction. Okay? When the grader sees this, they're just going to just be very disheartened, and it's not going to be good for your grade on that question. Okay, so don't do that kind of thing. <coughs> okay, so incidentally, just to make sure that we have a correct solution, what is the derivative of e to the 5x? e to the 5x multiplied by 5. Good. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, the other thing, the other thing that I suppose could happen that I don't, that I've only, I think I've seen it a couple times, but not frequently, is what would be wrong with this? Right, so you've got you've to look at these two at the same time, so that, so if you can't even see what's wrong with it, then that's good. But you've got to look at these two at the same time so you can see what happened here. Should have used the power rule, but actually used the exponential rule. Right? Should have used the power rule, but actually used the exponential rule. Good. So that would be wrong. Okay, so any questions about this? Okay, so derivatives of bases other than e, yes? Okay, <laughs> it happens all the time. Okay, so then, <coughs> no, people come into my office and they say, I've got a question, and then I say, well, write it down for me, and then they say, oh, never mind, because <laughs> they get it figured out before I say anything. Okay, so then now we have a remark. So then just like there can be exponentials in bases other than e, there can be logs in bases other than e. So, you know, for example, log base 10 used very frequently by human beings because we have 10 fingers. Great. Okay, log base 2 used very frequently in computer science because... Uh, the memory of in computers is composed of bits which have two states, okay, like a, like a two-fingered person. Right? Okay, so then, at any rate, generally speaking, the log base A 
of x is by definition, this is its definition, it is the log of x divided by the log of a. Okay, that is its mathematical definition. And so that's, that's the reason why you hear me saying the log, right? because all of the other ones are defined in terms of this one, the natural log. Okay, for that reason, <laughs> for that reason, uh, you know, computing derivatives is pretty straightforward. Oh, no, not, a, not an example, a remark. Let's compute the derivative of, <coughs> Uh, what am I trying to say? The log base a of x. Okay, so then it's so short, we'll just do it right here. So then this is the derivative of the log of x divided by the log of a. Okay, so incidentally, incidentally, what are the restrictions on a? Right, so it, because you have to you have to evaluate the log of a, what's the first thing that's true is that a has to be in the domain of log. So what's the domain of log? Greater than zero. But additionally, because of the definition, because of the definition, we can't have the log of a is equal to zero. So a cannot be what? A cannot be one. So then notice that these are exactly the same conditions for the exponential function, right? So a to the x is a legitimate exponential function any time that a is positive and not 1. <coughs> okay, so then I need to do one more thing, and then she has an important announcement. Okay. So for example, for example, let's compute uh, this one the derivative of the log base 10 of x squared plus 1. Oh, and I needed to finish this. This is 1 over log a multiplied by 1 over x. Okay, so what is this derivative? So it will be 1 over log 10, and then multiplied by the derivative of the log of x squared plus 1. So what's the derivative of the log of x squared plus 1? So it will be x squared plus 1 derivative over x squared plus 1. So this is 1 over log 10, multiplied by 2x over x squared plus 1. Okay, so then that's the cutoff for the exam, and now it's time for an announcement.